Back in 2016, um, we had the idea to have a business here in Valle de Guadalupe since about 2012. Uh, we knew we wanted to do rental cabins, but we didn't know what we wanted to do other than that. Um, so we started building the rental cabins in 17. They started renting out in 18. Um, I had been home brewing since 2007, and uh, my wife and I were at a winery here in the valley, and we were noticing people getting off the buses and a lot of people were asking for beer and my wife leans over to me and says we should do a brewery and I think my response is you're crazy like I, I didn't think it was a good idea at all even though I was a home brewer and every home brewer's dream is to open their own brewery no matter how big or small um, but I, I thought it was just I didn't think the palate was here I didn't think the customers were here um, and come to find out as usual she was right and I was wrong um, so other breweries had opened up here in the valley. Uh, we started coming uh, to those breweries, I want to say around 2015, 16, you, you had one or two here. And then uh, we just said, Let, well, let's do it. I'm already home brewing. Let's buy a bigger system. Let's just go all in and uh, try to make it happen. So we added the idea of the brewery to the cabin rental business here and uh, finally opened up uh, February of 20, uh, promptly got closed down. March of 20, uh, opened back up in June. So now we're gonna use our, uh, our anniversary as June. So this year, it will be two years. Bellinghausen is my mom's last name. Um, she, her family is German from the Rhine region of Germany. We didn't have that name as the brewery name in the beginning. We didn't know what the name was gonna be. We had uh, bounced around a bunch of different ideas. Uh, my mom ended up passing away January of 2018 and we knew right away you know what, that's gonna be the name. So we put out some feelers to some family members saying, hey, what would, what would you think about if we used the name for a brewery? And they were all 100% behind it and they thought it was really neat. And at the same time, we were looking for a niche anyway. So we didn't wanna just be another brewery that made everything. There's nothing wrong with that, but we wanted to have like a specific style. So when you come to Bellinghouse and you know you're gonna get a style, and our, that style just happened to be German. What better way to use my mom's name from Germany to use the style of beer that that came even from a lot of your Mexican beers or actually German styles as well. Um, so that, that just kind of naturally flowed. We didn't plan it. It just kind of happened. The basic steps are you're going to take your ingredients, which generally is, is your water, uh, grains from barley, hops, and then yeast. Um, the, the kind of the flow through here is this, this tank here is uh, my mash tun. So we would put grains in here, uh, set hot water on top of it and let it soak. And what that does is the, the hot water will extract the carbohydrates from the grains. And then we will transfer through, through valves and hoses and a pump over to the boil kettle over here. And that will boil uh, the wort, so the unboiled uh, syrup basically that we're making from from soaking the grains makes worked and we'll boil that typically for typically for an hour sometimes longer depending on the recipe and in there you'll add hops so hops are a bittering agent so if you only boiled in and bottled or keg the uh, work from the grains it would be too sweet so you use the hops to either counteract it make it balanced or to make it hot beer once it's been boiled and hopped we'll cool it through a heat exchanger and then transfer it into one or two of these tanks behind me where it'll uh, ferment with added yeast. And uh, the, the brew day, uh, from the time I open this garage door to the time I can close it on this particular system is about 10 hours. That includes preparation and cleaning and, and closing up. And then uh, the fermenters, depending on the yeast I use, depending on the ingredients, depending on a lot of things, will take between three days to 10 days to ferment. And then uh, we might do a secondary fermentation. We might uh, age in place in the tank. Um, but then overall from the brew day to you drinking it out of the tap, anywhere from 10 days to six weeks. Uh, lagers typically are uh, much longer in fermentation because it's a different type of yeast. It ferments at a, at a lower rate, at a lower temperature, and then they need to be aged longer as well. So lagers like 
Uh, a lot of your commercial beers that you'll buy, whether it's a Miller or a Budweiser or down here a, a Dos Equis or a Tecate, those are all lagers uh, and they take longer to ferment and then longer to age. So a lot of craft breweries, microbreweries will do mostly ales, which can be fermented much faster and aged much faster. So your IPAs and stouts and things of that nature are ales. Uh, even though they have a lot more flavor typically, uh, it takes a lot less time to make. So which is why one of the reasons they're very popular in craft breweries is that time and space is money, so the less time they can be in the fermenter, the more money the brewery can make. The, the fireplace directly across from me that's been here for a couple years now was donated from a cousin up in the San Joaquin Valley about halfway between Bakersfield and Fresno and Tulare County. Uh, it's where we grow a lot of the citrus in, in the U.S., especially on the West Coast. They had it on their property. <clears throat> they asked us if we wanted it and we snatched it up right away. So those pieces that I know the, the people who gave it to me or that I got it from, those have like the most, the most meaning. Uh, and we have several of those. There's the, some of the picnic tables that are painted brown and blue. Uh, I bought those and, and, and from a kit at Home Depot, but friends of mine in San Diego took them, sanded them, and painted them for us. And then they've since moved to Germany. So it's kind of neat to have, to have those pieces as, uh, as memories of, of them. And uh, then there's another fireplace over here that a local found on his dad's ranch and, and donated it to us. Um, we have another fireplace that was given to us that we actually put in my dad's house here in the valley that it's in the wall so we have a bunch of pieces like that and other customers that we have that come on a regular basis that either live here or pretty close by uh, bring us stuff and, and as I create the rest of this space I'm going to put shelves up and they're, they're going to be able to put their personalized mug or the, the, the glass they like to drink out of at home and they'll be able to keep their mug here and kind of like a like a club club atmosphere and, and we on purpose don't do a very good job of advertising right now because we don't make enough beer to really push it um, so if if we pushed it pushed advertising and really reached out to the the tours and things of that nature then we're slammed and then we run out of beer and then the next weekend we have to close because we don't have any beer and then we lose our regular customers because they can't count on us. So there's that, there's that fine, there's that gray area of trying to figure out how much marketing do I do compared to how much beer I can make compared to the experience that I want people to have. I don't want to just sell out a beer all the time. I want people to have that experience and come back and we develop relationships with our customers and we hang out with our customers and we have, you know, our, our social life in Mexico is, is through our, our customers as opposed to just working and, and, and having a business that's just faceless customers all the time and that's not really what we, what we want. And it's good for our own sanity because it's a long day. You know, that's a long weekend, you know, and then I got to go to go to brewing beer and handling the and the property and the business and the kids in school and stuff like that. So I don't need to be at, at 46 years old. I don't need to be up till midnight, three nights a week partying with my with my customers. <laughs> yeah, maybe once a month. Yeah. <laughs>